Bonjour, crafty one. Hello, crafty one. We received a question from a fellow crafty one. His name was Dylan, and he asked how much to obtain color photos from the funeral. This, I have no idea, my friend. I've never contacted the media or anything like that. To me. So I don't know how much it costs for a photo. My apologies. Second thing was he had a request. So in order to make up for my apology, let's do your request. Now, do Scott Steiner, s'il te plaît. What he's saying is, do Scott Steiner, please. Okay, my good fella, let's do Scott Steiner. But let's also add Bam Bam Magnuson. Why do I add them both? I call them, I term those guys, Shadow Twins. They have so much in common. What do I mean by this? First of all, someone mentioned yesterday that they share a similar fate. They were both killed by their brothers. They were Hell's Angels, so they got murdered by their own biker buddies. Why? Once again, another similarity. In my opinion, from what I could tell, they had a sort of similar type of hot-headed temperament. What do I mean? Well, one of them actually killed other another biker who was invited to a party. And that party was during the biker war in order to patch them in. And I think it was Bam Bam Magnuson. I'm pretty sure of it. And he messed things up hard. And he killed a leader of the other biker club that was invited as a guest. Either it was a leader or a member. Don't quote me on this. So, of course, the Hells Angels did not take this lightly, and they did not care that he was a brother because they killed him with a hammer. Now, eerily similar, we have Scott Steiner, which today I'm going to be focusing on because that's the question for our uh, fellow Dylan. So let's go for it. Tell me about Scott Steiner, Forger. Scott Steiner was a dual citizen, American and Canadian, and he was born in Wisconsin in 1962, and he relocated in Quebec with his family. But he relocated young. I think he was around six to eight years old. But not much is known about his life in Quebec, Canada. By the early 90s, what we do know is that he became one of the most reputable members of the Hells Angels in terms of being a hothead. And he was part of the Montreal chapter. And he was extremely influential in the beginning. He owned stripper agencies as well as escort services, which is line of business that Hells Angels have acquired through time. That's their specialty. Now, the Hells Angel became a godfather. We became a godfather. If you've watched Saga of the 1%, I always talk about L'Animal Joie Smith. And he went to jail. Remember I told you he beat up a guy at Le Gascon Club in La Chine? You remember that? Well, he was convicted in August 30th. Uh, well, it was August 30th of 1996, L'Animal Joie Smith. And that's when Scott Steiner enters the picture. Because he became now the de facto godfather of the Death Riders. Vers les années 1745, les habitants de la Nouvelle-France utilisaient une méthode particulière pour organiser et répartir leurs terres, soit le régime seigneurial. Cette méthode permettait d'attirer un bon nombre de colons, puisque ces terres étaient à l'époque très convoitées pour l'agriculture. À cette époque, la majorité des familles sont installées dans la vallée du Saint-Laurent. La vallée du Saint-Laurent se divisait en 250 seigneurs. Souvent, Ce sont des éléments géographiques, tels que des rivières ou des montagnes qui délimitaient leur superficie. La plupart du temps, les seigneuries se trouvaient près des cours d'eau, comme le fleuve Saint-Laurent, le long du Richelieu et la rivière Chaudière. La Nouvelle-France était la propriété du roi de France. Les représentants du roi distribuaient donc les seigneuries dans la colonie. Après que le territoire ait été découpé en seigneuries, elle était confiée gratuitement à des communautés religieuses à des hommes et des femmes ou à des militaires qui pouvaient assurer le développement de cette vie. La Joie Smith was a terror in Cartierville. As part of the baseball team, he was carefully selected to be godfather. As savage as Baker, bullying with bombs, swinging his dick around bars and clubs. I mean, look at him, look at his size. I mean, one swing of that thing, that bear trap. Oh, the boy got it. He got that savage beating. He bombed Le Gascon and beat that kid till he was retarded. No, literally, into a vegetative state. The representative of the Roi pouvait lui enlever les 
De plus, si un censitaire n'entretenait pas bien sa terre ou ne payait pas le sens et les rentes, on lui enlevait sa demeure. Nous allons maintenant voir plus en détail ce qu'on retrouve dans la seigneurie et comment celle-ci est organisée. And fittingly, Scott Steiner replaces l'animal Smith as godfather of the Death Riders. Scott Steiner was an absolute psychopath, as we will see. I told you, Mom knows how to pick them. And I knew how to pick you, crafty one. Who else would have the balls to tell you all this? The most hated man in Quebec, the... Forger. The Forgeron. Help me help you make Canada and Quebec great again, in my own way. Remember, the pen is mightier than the sword. Now, and as you may know, the Death Riders are one part of the amalgamation into what we call the Rockers. Yes, it's a gang with a huge history, a biker club with a huge history. In fact, I talk about Death Riders a lot. I mentioned uh, Stéphane Robert. Forgive me, I forget the names. The names get mixed up on the spot sometimes. Uh, Martin Robert and Stéphane Plouffe. Yes, there you go, Death Riders. And those two came from that cl from that club. They were youngins in that day. You, you see, Scott Steiner would have been their elder if he were alive today. And he supervised the gang's activities in Laval and the Lower Laurentians. When I say gang, I mean the biker club. Later that year, Scott Steiner, in the end of 1996 is what it's believed, he moved into a luxurious mansion, which you've probably never heard about, the majority of you. They called it La Vigueur, and it was in Ile Jésus, the island of Jesus. We spoke about, I don't know if I briefly mentioned the Jesuits in Quebec uh, yesterday, well, there you go. See, the names are coming up. These are not by coincidence, my friends. It's not just some, some randomly then decided to call it Il Jésus. The Jesuits or the Catholics were heavy in Quebec. And they practically named every city or every, every part or zone of our beautiful province. That's why you get so many Catholic names like Notre Dame. Now, Steiner had a bodyguard who was none other than Donald Magnuson and he had him move in one of his homes on the property. So La Vigneur is like a castle, if you will. There's multiple properties on it. It's an estate, if you will. And it became the base of operation for Steiner, where he conducted his business with other puppet clubs or Hell's Angels. They would go and gather there. It's sort of like a, his own mini bunker, if you will. And there were, of course, plenty of death riders to visit. But also interesting about Scott Steiner, we mentioned strip clubs, we mentioned, mentioned escort services, so we're talking about the sex industry, are we not? I could not finish this statement without adding that he was also part of porn movies, which he filmed on that properties. The most infamous one that you should be able to find, no, I haven't checked, I haven't checked it out, my friend. <laughs> I'm not interested. It's called Babe's Angel. Now, Going back to the Biker War, do you remember around 1996, 1997, Rock Machine, Hell's Angels were warring it out? Well, Steiner had his strip club burnt, mysteriously. Of course, we can extrapolate that it was his rivals that did that to him in order to hurt the Hell's Angels. Yes. Now, why was Steiner killed by the Hell's Angels? This part is speculative, but he did suffer the same fate, hammer blows to the head. That shows you that the, their deaths were personal. They were filled with animosity or hatred. If not, why not just shoot the guy and be done with it? Clearly, they wanted to punish the person. They wanted to make him suffer and they wanted to make it close, up close and personal. But Forger, you didn't tell us why he was killed. All right, it was a speculation, dear crafty one, as to why he was killed, and this is the speculation. Do you remember we talked about the young child, Daniel Desrochers, that died from a bomb explosion in Hochelaga Maisonneuve, which is, by the way, the neighborhood of Mamboucher, which he led and would not allow anyone else to milk except himself because he had grown there, he considered it his home. And the only person who could run drugs over there would have been Gregory Woolley, at his, at his behest, of course. 
And this is not speculation because we saw that in the very last indictment for Mambouche while he was in jail, I'm pretty certain that they found Gregory Woolley meeting his daughter and operating Mambouche's illegitimate claim to the neighborhood, the business streams, and Gregory would hand down cash to Mambouche's daughter to, for Mambouche because of course they could not communicate directly together. Gregory Woolley would not go to the penitentiary and go meet Mambouche. That would have been a stupid idea. They sent the daughter to do the job, you see? You'll notice that this is a very common theme, not just for the Hells Angels, for many organized crime groups, even the Mexican Mafia. The last point when your leader is in jail, the very last ditch effort to contact him, you have no longer any options available. It's through family, wives, and now we know that they're not immune to using their daughters as well. Yes, she got into trouble for it. And yet, it's hard to blame her because she didn't choose that life. She didn't choose to be born under Mom Boucher. What would you do if it was your father asking you for help? It starts to get muddled a little bit with our emotions. We gotta show her a little bit of empathy for that, in my opinion. So going back to the subject, why was Steiner killed? Well... The bomb explosion for Daniel Durocher, they believe that he's the one who put it. They're not sure, however, they, are, they have a pretty good idea it's gotta be him. Because they say that he was responsible for stashing dynamites at a certain point. He even came up with a brilliant idea to use them. But his plans were put on hold. They had never gotten to the point yet. So it was funny when the child died from an explosion. One question, Crafty One, that will always be in my head or anyways. Because the meeting was Mom Boucher had invited a drug dealer to come visit them in one of their bunkers. I think it was even a Death Rider or Rockers. No, it was the Rockers bunker, I believe, in Oshlaga Maisonneuf. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's one of those, one of the, I believe that was it. As the drug dealer left, I believe, that's the point. Then he went to his car and someone remote control, with a remote control, activated the bomb which blew up, he could clearly see the kid. So the question arises, could it be even possible that Mom Boucher knew all about it and they were in cahoots to have the drug dealer killed? Was Mom Boucher willing to watch a kid die? That's one of the mysteries. That's a, one hypothesis. Second hypothesis, of course, that also means that Mom Boucher is cunning enough to cut his losses and murder Steiner and put the blame on him because that end, the end result is Mambouche was alive and he was with the others when they, pro when they killed him. Again, speculation, but we did have informants explain that this was the case. Although they had probably not been there themselves, they heard it through the grapevine. So the second hypothesis is Scott Steiner acted alone. He didn't tell anyone and he wanted to keep it a surprise and when he tested the waters and he saw that his crew was not happy that they were disappointed rightfully so a kid had been killed he knew he had effed up big and at that moment he decided i will keep my mouth shut and this version of events hypothesis 2 seems to be supported somewhat by informant Danny Kane, who was, I believe, at the time, trying to get inside of the Hells Angels. He wanted to join, but he was always part of their puppet clubs. I think he was part of the Rockers. And they had used him as a... They had created another chapter, or I'm sorry, another club called the Demon Keepers. And they pretended to have an expansion in Ontario through that. Well, apparently he got used. And he didn't like it, so he turned informant. And he shared this story, the following that one day he could sense his friend Steiner mention, ask people questions. Did you hear about the bombing? What do you guys think? How do you guys feel about it? And he could see them not replying in a favorable way. And that put the fear of God in him. And so he shut his mouth. Danny Kane says he sensed this in the conversation. So he thought that this whole time it was probably Scott Steiner which seemed to have been confirmed later on since he was killed with a hammer. Now, here's the thing. Scott Steiner had bought that mansion and he had just had a glamorous wedding. 
I imagine other Hells Angels were present. Well, on the evening of November 1st, uh, November 4th, forgive me, 1997, just weeks after that marriage, guess what? He calls Donald Magnuson, who was his bodyguard, and he told him, Listen, buddy, we got a meeting to attend with our friends. We got church. Witnesses say Magnuson left that house in tears, but the two never returned. Weeks later, the RCMP were questioning his disappearance, and they thought that perhaps he was hiding to escape the impending deportation. Because you know us in Canada, we don't mess around. We deport them. <laughs> and so, an arrest warrant was issued in 1998 on January of 22nd. He was charged with possessing goods obtained through the proceeds of crime and his estate in La Vigueur was seized. Two houses in Sorrells as well as a garage, they say. And the truth behind Scott Steiner's disappearance came out on around 1998 or 1999. The police discovered Magnuson's corpse in the St. Lawrence River. His body had floated to the surface. Almost 12 months later, on April 15th of 1999, it was apparent that the Hells Angels had beaten them both to death and, plas and wrapped them in a plastic and then dumped them in the river. So at the time, the motivation was unknown. Now we believe we have a pretty good idea. And to end the story... Do you remember Le Chateau de la Vigueur? Here's a photo, published on the 29th of August, 2000. And it shows that the mansion caught on fire. And a container with gasoline was found, opened and emptied right next to the fire. Why would it catch on fire? Why would they burn it? Remember, the police seized that property in 1997. But by the time of the burning, this luxurious home belonged to a BC investor who he had bought it for $351,000. I ask you again, if it was seized in 1996 and an investor bought the property a few years later, why would the mansion burn in 2000? Could it be that they killed their own brother in that same property? Could it be they committed murders in there and they wanted to be sure there was no biological evidence or remains left? No DNA to scavenge. I'll let you decide that one. And that was the fate of Bam Bam Magnuson and his leader. Hells Angel Scott Steiner. Now, and do like all our videos, it's a war against YouTube censorship, the new dictatorship, or we shall all become cucks to a bigger evil. And we need you to give Canadians and Americans the latest on the Canadian mob war.